there's several things that contribute to why moles grow. One, obviously, is the amount of water that they need. And the amount of water means some moles need less water, some moles need more water. But they all need water in order to uh, carry out these hydrolysis reactions. In addition to that, uh, they need to have the ability to sporulate. And there are different mechanisms that they use to sporulate. Sometimes it's airflow, sometimes it's the brushing uh, of, of, a, of a material or a body uh, on that surface. Sometimes it's UV light that causes them to sporulate. It doesn't matter what those items are, but in, a, in the indoor environment, some moles find those characteristics to be more conducive to their reproduction. And so when we begin to do investigations in buildings and we open up walls or we find mold growing, there are certain molds that we characteristically always find inside buildings, um, uh, Aspergillus, Penicillium, Ketomium, uh, sometimes Stachybotrys. Uh, and, and they're going to be growing in very characteristic locations because they like that moisture content, they like that particular environment, they like the materials that we have in buildings. But you will tend to see certain uh, species of moles that tend to grow indoors because these environments are very conducive to the temperature, the humidity, the sporulation characteristics, uh, the airflow. Some of them don't like a lot of airflow, so that's why they like to grow in walls. Or they like to grow in what we call dead zones along the wall where the airflow is very, very low, but yet it gives them enough moisture to be able to grow. And so consequently, we see these molds indoors uh, more frequently than we see other types of molds. Molds do not care where the water comes from. It can be a roof leak. It can be a broken pipe. It can be a flood. That's what these organisms need. So any type of water damage um, that brings high, a high amount of water or a large amount of water into your house will, will cause mold growth. If you splash water on marble, nothing bad is going to happen because mold is not going to grow on marble. But if you splash water on cellulose-containing material every day, if every day when you brush your teeth you get a cellulose-containing building material by your sink wet, mold's going to grow on it. it. It's guaranteed to happen. Now another thing that may not be so obvious, which we see a lot here in Texas, is water coming out of the air. Uh, we see this a lot in very moist climates. And what, essentially what happens is when people build houses or build buildings and they over air condition the building and they bring in hot, humid air from the outside and don't dehumidify it, essentially what happens then because the building is over air conditioning, the building surfaces are cool. If you have a lot of water in the air inside of a building, what happens is, is that the uh, building materials reach the dew point. And, and if you ever go outside uh, in the morning in the summer and you see dew on the grass, that's exactly what's happening. A good example would be a glass of tea. You take a glass of tea out in the summer with ice in it, and what happens, of course, is you get all kinds of water condensing on the outside of the cup. Now, a lot of people think that it's coming through the cup, but of course that's not true. What's happening is, is the water is condensing out of the air and condensing on the cup. Well, the same thing can happen in a building. And if you have this happening day in and day out inside of a building, if the building surfaces are very cool and you bring in humid air from the outside, water will condense on the building surfaces and mold will grow inside the building. And that can be another cause of mold growth. If you have water intrusion or water damaged building materials, say from a flood, from a pipe break, uh, from a dishwasher overflow in a home, or you have condensation on windowsills, you have unusual moisture on building materials. The low concentrations of naturally occurring fungi now will use that moisture to grow, and they'll grow to large numbers. And some of these fungi that can cause adverse human health effects grow rapidly in indoor environments to large numbers. They get dispersed by normal human activity, and then there's exposure to the building occupants. 
when these molds are growing indoors on wet building materials. They're often using the cellulose that's in those building materials. Perhaps it's the ceiling tile that are cellulose. It's using the paper backing on gypsum wallboard. It doesn't use the gypsum inside the sandwich. It's using the paper on either side as a food source. Sometimes they're using wallpaper or the mastic behind the wallpaper as a food source. Um, it could be using the dirt and dust that's present on bookshelves or um, other parts of the, the office environment as a nutrient source. When they're outdoors, molds are, are very common in soil or on plant leaves and trees. I mean, if you think about it, fungi's uh, natural job on the planet is to recycle. They're the penultimate recyclers. Their entire purpose for being here is to take dead leaves and trees, turn it into carbon back in the soil so we can have new leaves and trees. When it's growing indoors, it doesn't recognize the fact that that's a two by four or two by six or a piece of ceiling tile. It just sees it as a nutrient source. 